the boys. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You just go ahead and keep talking if you want. I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just go ahead. We're on that yeah. camera, by the way. All right. I'll, I'll go ahead and stop whatever you whatever you no. want. <laughs> Let you We're go. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on this. Guess what day this is. You don't have any idea what, what I'm showing I'm going to guess November 8th. Tuesday, November 9th. Okay. This is Tuesday. Uh, this is Tuesday, November 9th. So uh, welcome, folks. Hope you're having a big day as uh, Scott McElravey is in the building. And uh, we are going to talk uh, high school basketball, Fairfield High School basketball, Black Diamond Conference High School basketball. Uh, we may even talk a little bit of a line eye. Excited about that. Might talk a little yes. uh, Millican, I guess. Or no, McKendry, I guess we might Open talk City, a little. Open City, McKendry, all those. Yeah. Open yeah. City, you've got Red Lake, I've got guys playing. You've everywhere. got people all yeah. over the place. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, so we'll we'll uh, we'll uh, chop it up here with uh, Scott McAravey here in a little bit. Again, uh, we do appreciate you folks tuning in here on this gorgeous Tuesday, November 9th. Hope you're having a, be- a beautiful day as well. Now you're off camera, so you can go ahead and lean back, do whatever you want to do. UT Martin football. UT. Wyatt? Oh, I forgot about Wyatt yeah. playing down at UT yeah. Martin. Yeah, uh, they're still uh, their season's still going on. Has he gotten to play yet? I don't think so. He's traveled. I know he. I, I know if he. I knew he traveled, but I didn't know if he had dressed yet. I, I don't. I think talked so. to Fred a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And had had not Yeah, he had switched to defense. I think this year. Well, he was no, excited about that. That'll affect uh, that. That will certainly affect. It. We'll talk about all those yeah. things here in just a few minutes. Uh, what is going on here on this Tuesday, November 9th? This is uh, well. There's not a ton going on, but I did find one community event item to tell you about the monthly meeting of NARF the national active and retired federal employees is uh, going to be held uh, now this is the Wayne County meeting it's going to be held on uh, Tuesday November 9th today at 11 30 a.m. at DiMaggio's and uh, they're in Fairfield all members and prospective members are encouraged to attend for more information give them a call at 847 847- 2321. That's uh, for everybody wanting to uh, take advantage and uh, play with the NARF folks. What else is going on, ladies and gentlemen, today? This is National Scrapple Day. Have you ever eaten anything called Scrapple? I don't think so. You're going to have to tell me what it is. There's what it, there's, there it is right there. National Scrapple Day recognizes the first pork food invented in America. For those not familiar with Scrapple, which would include me, it's traditionally a mush of pork scraps and trimmings combined with cornmeal, wheat flour, spices such as sage thyme, savory, and black pepper. The mush is then formed into a semi-solid loaf, sliced, and pan-fried. Spam? <laughs> it's kind of, it, it yeah. really is yeah. kind of like spam. I go. mean, it's, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's a, it's a, delicacy in the pennsylvania dutch area okay. type of thing it's a uh, scrapple also known as uh, pone house and uh, the immediate ancestor of scrapple was of course the low german dish called pan house you didn't know this i uh, did not nobody told you any of this <laughs> uh it is a food eaten for breakfast I, it sounds like sausage actually during the 17th and 18th centuries german colonists who settled near philadelphia and chester county pennsylvania developed the first recipes for scrapple and with uh, such a, a rich heritage many folks strongly associate scrapple with rural uh, philadelphia baltimore uh, washington dc eastern pennsylvania Supermarkets do offer Scrapple throughout the region in both a refrigerated and in frozen cases. I got to tell you, I I am not a uh, I'm not an enthusiastic supporter of Scrapple. <laughs> but you you do you do serve it. Look at that. You serve it with eggs as well and you put syrup on top. Okay. I uh- I got to tell you. That almost looks like French toast there, but I'm going to say it doesn't taste like French toast. I bet you that doesn't taste (laughs) at all like French toast. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, happy National Scrapple Day, ladies and gentlemen. What else is uh, going on 
Today, folks, uh, well, not just today, but all week long, the first full week in uh, November, and this is a nice one, this is National Animal Shelter Appreciation Week. This recognizes the shelters providing care that bridges the gap to adoption for millions of abandoned and stray animals. The event takes place each year during the first full week of November. Observance also acknowledges the hardworking folks who support the efforts of the shelters and uh, try to keep pets healthy. Even though dogs and cats are some of the most beloved pets in the United States, pet homelessness is a huge problem in this country. There are about 70 million stray animals in the United States. Uh, up to 8 million of these animals end up in shelters, about 3,500 animal shelters in the U.S., and it's at these uh, shelters where these animals receive a second chance. So what can you do to help out uh, animal shelters during National Animal Shelter Week? By all means, uh, go ahead and uh, go make a donation. And tell friends, families, and pet owners to get their pets spayed and neutered. Donate food. Uh, you uh, dog food. Uh, also, you can help make a donation for pet microchipping. All kinds of different things you can do to help keep help animals. Uh, the, the Humane Society of the United States founded National Animal Shelter Appreciation Week back in 1996, and they created this week to acknowledge and to promote the role of animal shelters in communities all over the country. So there you go. Uh, what else to do today? What's on television? What do you want to see on TV, folks? A few things uh, going on tonight, this Tuesday night. It's Maction Night. Maction continues the, the football from the MAC. Uh, it's the Buffalo Bills at Miami of Ohio. The Red Hawks, that's on ESPN2, Channel 638 at 7 o'clock. 6 o'clock, Ohio University is Eastern Michigan. That's ESPN U, Channel 642. And also at uh, 630, the Akron Zips will be playing the Western Michigan Broncos. That's CBS Sports Network, Channel 628. NHL hockey tonight. The Blues are in Winnipeg. And that'll be on Bally Sports Midwest, Channel 630. NBA basketball at 930. Pardon me, at 630 tonight. The Bucks at the Sixers. A doubleheader on TNT, channel 633. Bucks and Sixers, followed by Portland Trailblazers at the LA Clippers. And what do you think the other thing that is happening on November 9th, Tuesday, November 9th, tonight? Actually, this afternoon. November 9th. Uh, Tuesday, November 9th. Yeah. How about the, are the Illini playing? The Illini are playing. This there is the go. first day of go. college basketball yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah, they're for Division One. Uh, now Kofi. I've got a slew of games here for yeah. you, folks. On Fox Sports 1 at 3.30, Mount St. Mary's, the Mountaineers will be at the number four Villanova Wildcats. At 5 o'clock, the Akron Zips are at Ohio State, number 17 Ohio State. That's on the Deuce, channel 638. Uh, doubleheader on ESPN. I think this is all Madison Square Garden. Number three, Kansas versus Michigan State. Michigan State is not rated. Right. Did you know that? I guess they pay attention. I, I bet they will be before the year's over. I'm just going to take a guess. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, Michigan's, Michigan's actually better than that. Michigan, Michigan is better right now. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. At 8.30, Kentucky plays Duke. Those god-awful Duke Blue Devils are ranked. What do you think they're ranked? Can both those teams lose that game? It would be nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? Uh, what do you think Duke's ranked? I mean, okay, so I know Duke. They were terrible last yeah, year. Yeah, they're they're right there either a little bit behind Illinois or right in front of them. Right in front. Okay. They're number nine. Okay. Kentucky's I knew it was close. Kentucky's number 10. Yeah. Illinois, or Duke is number nine, and Illinois is number 11. Big Ten Network, doubleheader, Eastern Michigan Eagles at Indiana. That's on Channel 600 at 530, followed at 730 by our Fighting Illini taking on the Jackson State Tigers at 730. On and doggone it, Kofi's not going to be there. Yeah, it's it's amazing to me how some of these teams or programs get a lot of like question marks, but they never they get hand slapped. We'll call it. Well, and what yet was others. It, uh, uh, what was it? Jerry Tarkadian said uh, whenever uh, Kentucky got Kentucky got in trouble, and and uh, Kentucky's in such trouble they're going to put uh, Cleveland State on probation. <laughs> 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 that is uh, Scott McElravey. I'm Bruce Dickey. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about. Fairfield Mules basketball, along with all kinds of other things. Do please stick around. Back in a sec.
When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LamontsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. It's the weekend and your symptoms are worsening. The morning of a big meeting and you have a bigger sore throat. Ever experienced that urgency after picking up your sick child and your community health center has already closed? You will be able to connect to a provider at crhpc.org. Even if you have never been to CRHPC, you are welcome to utilize our services. Feel better after scheduling a video visit with CRHPC. Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like Lacrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Play City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Does your home show signs of foundation problems? Call the experts at Woods Basement Systems. Our power brace system can fix the problem permanently and help protect the value of your home. Call Woods Basement Systems today. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Mold, rank air, pests, all getting closer to inside your home. With a dirt crawl space, there's no telling what's below you. A sealed crawl space locks the nasty stuff out, plus can lower your utility bills. Woods, the all things basementy experts. It is all things new at Zimdar's Heating, Air Conditioning, and Appliance Repair. We have a new line of heating and cooling equipment and new technicians. Our new equipment line offers 24 months free financing and excellent warranty coverage. Our experienced service technicians can provide you with quality service and repairs on all brands of HVAC equipment. Zimdar's has been serving Clay County and the surrounding areas for over 23 years. The employees of Zimdar's are here to help, so call local and call Zimdar's. Hey folks, welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV. Uh, joined today by Scott McElravey. He is the head coach of the Fairfield Mules. Did you realize, now you probably did know this, but you are you have always struck me as somebody who doesn't pay a ton of attention to what happened last year or what happened uh, over the years. Do you know what year of coaching you're going into as a head coach? Well, I was told the other day 17. Did you know? Did yeah. you, I was wondering, did you yeah. realize that? Well, I, I kind of knew 16 was Noah's senior year. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're a year after that. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a long time. That's a good long time. <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Are you it's having fun doing it? Yeah. Well, it, I mean, you wouldn't do it otherwise. You know, um, last year was, was tough just because, you know, we didn't get started on time, but for good reason, I think. Um, and then having a senior son that didn't get his whole year, that that was really hard. Was that was was that? I, I've I've been wondering about that. Tell everybody who your who the seniors. Let's tell everybody who the seniors were that left la, after last year. Team. Well, we had Landon Zerlini. Landon my Zerlini son. with a fine career. Uh huh. Noah McElravey, my son. Colin Massey, Blake Pruitt, Brandon Lane. We're on that camera, by the way. And and Lucas Halbert. That one. Okay, I got you. <laughs> so we had six kids that had been in our program and I'd got the chance to work with since fourth grade. Yeah. And you know, that, that was probably the hardest thing, just knowing they didn't get to play any tournaments. They didn't get a state series, you know, of all years, you know, 
th that was hard. I mean, we were very thankful for the, the time we had. We got in 19 games, which was more than other teams got. I know Phil was on here last week, and they got – Shut down. They got shut down. They, oh, man. They, had, they had COVID. Yeah, and then we were it. their first game. I think that may have been the best game they played all year. That's what he says. Yeah, they that's played what really he said. well. Uh, and then he said his coaching kicked in. Well, I don't know about that. But, but uh, <laughs> no, they got know, they got fatigued. They did, and uh, that that was hard. You know, because you know you th those kids you I'd grown up with with them, and you were just expecting. You know, big things. And well, they they had they had been expecting big things oh, over the years for themselves. Too, yeah, right? they'd they'd been involved in our Sweet Sixteen team, the regional champ team the year before, and and their their last comments over the air when we got beat by Benton in a good game um, by a good team was, you know, we're going to win this next year. Yeah. Well, they didn't get a chance the next year, and yeah, I mean, they weren't they, the only within, seniors within in the a state, month. But, Within a month of of those comments, then their life changed in oh my goodness in uh, in March and, of nineteen. Not to forget, uh, I mean, we we had probably one of our best baseball teams right of years. I mean, we yeah. those kids, you know, Cade and Wyatt and and um, Garrett and Pruitt and all those guys. They'd been waiting their senior year to play, you know, baseball. And we we had a really nice team. They didn't get to play any games. Answer so. me, answer me a question. I, and I've been wondering this, uh, and I. I have I, I always wondered if uh, you and uh, the other parents. I mean, granted, you separate yourself from coaching uh, for a moment. If you and and uh, maybe uh, the uh, Justin and, and Marissa and and all, and, uh, and uh, Daphne and Chad and all the rest of the parents, if if you guys had. Looking forward to, and, and were the kids okay playing nineteen games? Sure, they were disappointed, but were you more disappointed thinking, uh, thinking of the years gone by? They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna be uh, bumming thinking about it. Well, I, I can be honest, and just speaking from Crystal and I's perspective, when we knew, you know, in November and December that it wasn't gonna happen, we we went to we went to Disney World. We like we have to do something different. Um, of course, we're big fans of going down there, but we just sure. have to take our minds off the fact that we're not at the El Dorado tournament. We're not, you know, and, and I was really worried. I didn't talk about it with Noah of just him not having a chance at all. I mean, I know there were a lot of Illinois families that looked into moving across the river. I know Coach Lots Flanagan moved this, and we almost did. With Crystal's job now, we could have. Yeah. Um, she worked in Vincennes, Indiana, you know, during last winter. Um, and, and we, you know, Noah wanted to play with his friends. And – and that's, you know, Landon did too, and everybody stuck around. And it was a whirlwind of games. Our last two weeks, we had four games one week, and then we had five the next. And the, the back end games on Saturday for each of those weeks were Mount Carmel at Mount Carmel, which they ended up, I think, number two in the state, yeah. 2A, and at Centralia, who had beaten Mount Carmel. And they were a great, a very good 3A team. So at the very end of, of playing four games that week, we played those two teams on Saturday, which. That doesn't mean that was the only reason they beat us because they were both those teams were better than us. Honestly, um, those were big games and a lot of fun, but it was just so draining, and that was definitely the toughest game too. That last one, well, that was those, I mean, you're talking about uh, you're talking about the end of an exhausting week. Oh, at yeah. the end of an exhausting two months, mm -hmm. and so did you? Had you resigned yourself back in early January of uh, last of 2021 that the season wasn't going to happen uh, had 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 or had you given up hope or did you still have we, hope? we kept hope um it, it was weird i think we found out like phil said the other day we found out on a friday and then yeah. monday we're in practice and you know I, I i know the mask is something that that's debated hard both ways i'd have wore 10 masks for those kids yeah. to play i mean yeah. i would have you know, I'd have stepped out there and a costume for them. I just, they deserve to play. And so, uh, you know, last season wasn't, you know, our younger kids, especially, it was nice having a, a veteran team because there wasn't much practice time. Yeah. So those younger levels have kind of, they've had a, kinda, a couple they of years there year. where they've really missed out. And so I think a lot of programs are playing catch up yeah. now, trying to get caught back up. Tell me a little bit about, uh, um, I, I was, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about, how much time did you get to put together? Because uh, because you had last year they let you practice what in October and then and then what you had a week before the season started or something. yeah and that was hard too the startup 
hey, you can you can get some practice in, but you got to wear a mask. You know, I do this. You can only have so many people in the gym. And so then you would get shut back down, and that yeah. that was the back and forth that were so hard. Um, but like I said, yeah, the games last year were you didn't have near as much time to prepare. Yeah, and uh, you know. We played all our conference teams, and then we got a chance. Though playing at Centralia was was super neat. Um, playing well, at I mean, Mount that's Carmel a, that's a was famous was gymnasium. Really, oh man. yeah, and it's beautiful. Um, playing at Mount Carmel, we hadn't played there. Oh man, are you serious? Lackey, you Lackey was a junior. Lackey's junior year was the last time we played at Mount Carmel. That would be like 2014 or something. So yeah, we it, the the kids that group had never played on that floor, wow. so that was fun too. Well, that's something. Um, one last question, and I'll get off of it. What do you? What was uh, you've talked? It was an empty gyms. How yeah. how was it dealing with empty gymnasiums and and in your discussions with fans? Who I mean, they, they were letting parents in, but yeah. Fairfield, along with Flora, we talked to Phil, and and, I, and we're going to have Josh Zink on next week, uh, and uh, Kevin Bowen. Mm -hmm. All those teams are have really fanatical bases, mm -hmm. and they'll have people from the community in. What are you, what were your discussions with fans like? I mean, were they were well torn up on a on a on a funny side? I didn't get as many suggestions <laughs> <laughs> during the game. I, 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 well, I was like, yeah. not where I was going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know what? I feel bad, though, because, like you said, Fairfield has always traveled well in basketball. Yeah. I mean, they have supported us yeah. so well. Um, you know, when you look at the El Dorado tournament, the Capital Classic, there's a reason they want Fairfield there. I mean, I, th I think, one, we, we feel good teams, and our fans travel. You bring people. You know, um, and when we're good, they really travel. Yeah. Um, so that was hard. And just the the kids, one, they wanted – people in there and they wanted their friends to watch yeah. them as well you know well so you know that's the thing it, it, no student sections that was hard that's the thing you see and, and and it's it's the kind of the fun part about watching volleyball this mm. fall is the the fans at least for for most of the schools we go to they've got huge fan bases mm. going the students student sections going in there and cheering them on our our kids have been wonderful of course coach snyder had a great team this year and our boys have enjoyed you know, going and supporting. They they have a theme night and yeah. and all that. And I I uh, challenge the volleyball girls to to do that for us this year too. And <laughs> I think there's already one set for our first for our first night. I'm not for sure what it is. Well, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, it, it'll be fun having that, them back. That's here. cool. That's Scott McRae. I'm Bruce Dick. We'll be back in just a little bit. We're going to talk more about uh, Mules basketball in the past as well as what's coming up. You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dick. He's back after this. Does your home show signs of foundation problems? Call the experts at Woods Basement Systems. Our Power Brace system can fix the problem permanently and help protect the value of your home. Call Woods Basement Systems today. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Mold, rank air, pests, all getting closer to inside your home. With a dirt crawl space, there's no telling what's below you. A sealed crawl space locks the nasty stuff out, plus can lower your utility bills. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Shy Diesel Service Company is your anything diesel full service center and fuel injection shop. Shy Diesel offers the quickest turnaround times to get you back on the road. Shy Diesel can service any diesel engine from agricultural, construction, heavy duty truck, and automotive. Let Shy rebuild your pump, injectors, or turbos. Need custom fuel lines? Shy has you covered. With a drive in service, they offer a variety of services, including oil changes, engine rebuilds, DOT inspections, and DPF cleanings. For unmatched quality, think Shy Diesel Service Company. Anything diesel. Well, hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at D at wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970 big talk with bruce dickey hey thanks for watching when you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround go to lamont chevrolet chrysler in fairfield let gabe mcgahey sheldon bunning jeff black dennis downs matthew rogers or caleb dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state of the art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. 
We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Get ahead of the game at Carter Athletic Academy, where the goal is to transform you into the best young athlete you can be. Train for top performance in football, volleyball, soccer, baseball, and softball. Professional private lessons and clinics are always available with Carter Athletic Academy's expert training staff. Carter's exclusive hit track system brings skill development as well as exciting gameplay to batting cages. Plus, the Academy is the perfect spot for your special event or celebration. The Carter Athletic Academy in Fairfield. Welcome back, folks. Big talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV, talking uh, with uh, Scott McElravey. He is the head coach of the Fairfield Community High School uh, boys basketball team. They're the Fairfield Mules. Uh, I, you know, and I mentioned it. I probably, I, I probably shouldn't have. And I had this, I had this graphic ready to go when Phil was here, and he asked me not to show it, which, which actually I didn't, I, I didn't have. But no, this is your career. There's your there's your career, at, oh, yeah. at uh, okay. Fairfield, and I I got to tell you I did not realize you guys got 19 games in in a yeah. month and a half last we, year. We were, I think in 2A we we had about as many games as anybody. We yeah. were very aggressive in getting games because we we had a veteran team. We wanted these kids to get as much time on the floor as possible. And so, yeah, how did it go? Okay. How did it go when, whenever you had, uh, when there, well, I'll show that again because you probably like seeing that. <laughs> well, there's some on there better than others, but I thought you were going to show me like Phil's record against mine. And it's, no, no, it's, no, uh, no, 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 I have, I, I have not. He's beating me more than I beat him, so that needs to change since he's in close? the conference. Um, I'm getting closer, yeah. <laughs> the last three years haven't been as good for Floor as they've been for they, They've been a little rougher. Yeah. For, but uh, it, now you made me forget my question. How did, how did you go about uh, – how, how late was the closest to the game time that you were able to lock in a, a new, a, somebody on the schedule? Like Centralia. I mean, that there were there – were you played 19 games last year. I think you went in with like 15 or 16 on your schedule, yeah. right? Yes, how did you? How are? How did, how did the ads get together to put all this together? And and would they consult you, or would you make suggestions? Or Coach Wells work? did a wonderful job of consulting us. I don't know if he slept last year with all the things he had. Well, to do. he had to find referees. Yeah. And, and maybe that's why he's not ads. That's he's why like, he hey, I've had yeah, That's why Justin Townsend's <laughs> yeah. um, ad. I can tell you, we had that snow there in February too that slowed things down, and it was a. And. We were at one point going to go down to Massac and play Massac and Cobden, and Cobden didn't want to play. And it was just we were like, well, hey, we don't want to go all the way down there and play Massac. Then it ended up being, hey, let's let's try to move up our Tuesday game. No, it was before the snow, because um, we moved to the Tuesday game with Hamco up yeah. to play them on Saturday so that we could get it out of the way. Because that next week, yes, we got snow. So that was there, there were days, that was with the snow coming. Yes, you knew that it was, was coming that, was that like, day. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, and you knew that, that it was going to be that yeah. it was going to be coming. Uh, see, now that kind of flexibility is well. It's hopefully a one-time thing, but I hope it's a one-time <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you, but I mean, that did kind of make it fun. Uh, it being did. able to being able to jog people in and out, right? Yeah, and some schools you'd, you'd ask them if they had dates open, and they had dates open for others, but maybe not you. I mean. Yeah, you, you had some of that too, because yeah. I mean, if if you have a chance to play somebody, and depending on how good you are, yeah, the, you don't want to just take a drubbing not, from somebody. Yeah, other schools might not want to. Yeah, that Matt Carmel had trouble seventeen finding, and two. Yeah, Matt Carmel had trouble finding games last year. I know because they're not coach, they weren't in a conference yet, and they were good, <laughs> and they were good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's fascinating. All right, let's talk a little bit about this year's squad. Uh, this is uh, you, 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 we already mentioned you lost uh, Landon Zerlini, uh, Noah McElravey, uh, two starters. Colin Massey was a starter, uh, and uh, and then uh, Blake and Brandon, yeah, and Blake, Blake Pruitt and, and Brandon Lane, and they all five started, didn't they? Correct. So we're over coming back. <laughs> I didn't realize you were over. I, yeah, I thought you had some coming back. Who who what seniors do you have coming well, back? Well, but but in saying that, I am excited about this group. They were thirteen and zero um, on their JV schedule last year. I had Dil I have Dylan Best and Noah Barger. All right, before we get into this, mm -hmm. you got to talk. You got to talk. Give me give me a minute or two on what a loss it is to your JV squad, losing Adam Buck. 
16 years. 16 years. Yeah. He's been your JV coach. I, I think I, – well, I don't Say know. Say some if, nice things I, I don't. It. I don't know if any – He's a Cardinal fan, but he's a line. Uh, he's an Illini fan. We share that. Yeah. Um, super great guy. Uh, I, we we tried just for fun when when it was over, and we knew that he was moving on to find other coaches and or tandems in Southern Illinois where they'd been together that long. And I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I couldn't find anyone. Well, usually a JV yeah. coach wants to move up. The, or, yeah, they come in and out, and and head coaches move on right. a lot of times too. So. Yeah, to have the stability there, I mean that's huge. I, I mean, wonder you know what, what you get. And do we know what his record was as a JV coach? It was really good. It was really really yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, he, I, I'm not for sure. He, it was really good. He went years probably without picking up ten losses in total. You yeah. know, you, you would you could like last year, like you say, he was last year was a uh, undefeated yep. team, and and uh, well, that, that's just uh, gonna go out. It's good to go out that way. Who's replacing him? Cody Bailey. Cody Bailey. Yeah, R- former player. Him, stole him up from uh, so, Hamilton County. Yeah, super excited about that. We tried to get him as a freshman coach a few years ago, and he, he wasn't ready yet to, to make the move. Um, recently married. Um, Settling down. Yeah. Moved up here. Super excited. Um, I, I, I think Cody has tremendous potential to, you know, hopefully take over for me one day. That If yeah. I had a wish, that's what I would – what well, to happen? Just um, you know, yeah, being honest. Maybe not. Maybe not tomorrow. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, no. I mean, hopefully just, not. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm just for teasing. sure. All right. Uh, who do you have coming back? The the JV kids coming in from last year are very well prepared coming in. Aren't they? I, yeah, I hope so. And I think there's multiple of those guys on on other years where we weren't as strong. They would have been starters. Yeah. I mean, you know, and and you know, the same could be said about last year's seniors as sophomores. There were. You know, some kids that only one of them started, too. and then, right. uh, yeah, and yep. then a couple the next year, and yep. all five of them the year after that. Yeah, so I've got Noah Barger and Dylan Best, Camden Robbins, McGuire Taylor, Blaine Milner, and then we have and those are the seniors. The, well, I have one more that um, moved to Fairfield last year, uh, Jesse Milner from okay. Sisney. He's going to play. So really, yeah, you got Jesse coming out. We do. Jesse is uh, Jesse's going to be a little pistol for you. We're we're excited about that. Is he uh, is he is he six five yet? Um, not quite, <laughs> but he teasing. plays tough. And he does play tough. Jesse, well Jesse, Jesse started at Cisney for his first since his years. freshman year. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, yeah. I think he'll mix in well with those kids. Then juniors, we have Eric Rogers and Luke Duckworth, and then Nick Easton. That's that's probably our top nine. We have a lot of sophomores playing. That you know, I think so you'll hope, be mixing in. I hope so. They've got a little size there with them. So. But there's the, a lot how, of them. How'd the freshman team do? Well, the sophomores now, how'd the freshman team do last year? Well, and that was the thing with them. Um, they typically, the way our conferences worked the last few years, you almost always play an abbreviated freshman right. game first. So the other games that we get are typically 3A teams, you know, because a lot of the schools our size just don't have full freshman rosters right. anymore. So they played a lot of the South 7 last year. They played a very good Mount Vernon team. Yes. They played. They, Saw were, them play. they were very good. They played Marion. They played Carbondale. So they they had some tough games there. There, but I mean that is a, an outstanding opportunity to learn. Yeah, doing that. Isn't yeah, you it? think you're good? <laughs> put, a, put a dot on your area and go an hour around. That if you think you're still good, then go another hour around. Yeah. So you know, um, yeah. They and and you know once again they they didn't get near as much practice time as we hoped. So we've really got to kind of catch them up. And even this summer was abbreviated just because my my last event as a parent was Noah and Landon's state track meet at towards the end of June. Yeah, yeah that was so June. So we didn't get much work with the kids in the summer either. Wow. Wow. I tell you what, let's do. Let's take another quick. We're going to talk a little bit more about this year's squad and uh, maybe talk a little bit about the uh, the Black Diamond East and uh, and uh, and all, also the rest of the schedule. You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey, Scott McRaven here, the uh, head coach of the Fairfield Mules back in a sec. Having car trouble? Need a tow or... folks sorry about the uh, little bit of a issue there we had a power glitch and uh so whatever folks are watching this on tv it's gonna we're gonna have like a three minute hole in the middle and uh, now on youtube it's gonna take me a little juggling to put this one there are two different ones going together right now so we hope anyway. they get double of us 
I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. Uh, I tell you what, let's do it. Uh, we were talking about, before uh, we got interrupted, we, you were talking about uh, uh, the uh, opportunities to play better people. Mm-hmm. Were you able to do that over the summertime, too, since you, got a, since you had a shortened summer? We did, and we usually play pretty good teams. Um, this summer especially, uh, we played Benton, Heron, Pinckneyville, um, who else did we play? Centralia again. Um, played a pretty rough schedule this summer. It was abbreviated. Is Centralia going to be as good as they were last year? Or did uh, they? Well, I know, I know Mount Carmel lost a lot. They did. Uh, they still will be decent, though. Uh, Centralia has their best player back, in my opinion. The the, the big sophomore, mm-hmm. Wilmoth, I think is his name, Cody Wilmoth. And, um, he's good. And is their JV pretty... team was pretty good, too. Uh, you mentioned... Um... You, you mentioned the uh, the some of the other folks you're playing. Is, that helps you, doesn't it, quite a bit when you're able to get back into the Black Diamond East play, don't you think? I, I think it does. It uh, now, now, if you're not as strong, those games don't may, maybe help you as much because you can just get demoralized. But with the teams we've had here recently, we needed to play some of those schools. And we've done that over the past. I mean, playing the Capital Classic, you're playing good teams yeah. every year. Yeah, doesn't help your record overall mm-hmm. if that's what you're looking at. But I think it – it's always – I've never seen my kids, like, scared to play anybody. Oh, know? that's good. Um, and that's exciting. Glad to get uh, – you're glad to get Flora back, uh, into the conference, yeah. I'm sure. I, I, but, you know, the, the, the only trouble part to me is uh, it seemed like Johnston City was finally beginning to get their sea legs under them a little bit. Yeah, if – and. There's, it's back and forth on whether Austin Brown's playing or not. If, oh, if is that right? If he's if, playing, that's kind of what I'm saying. They're, they're pretty decent this yeah. year because they had a 6'6 kid um, that was coming around. He's just a junior, I think. Um, yeah, if Austin plays, they'll be pretty competitive on that other side. Well, he's a uh, – I'm know, hearing he's probably not, though. Big Ten football player, he might want to end up That's a big out. deal. That's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. don't want to screw up a uh, any kind of a scholarship or anything like that. Tell me about the rest of the Black Diamond Conference. It's 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 going to be a bit uh, – I mean, the, the Mules have won a lot. We've won 30 in a row. 30 in a row in conference. Yeah, three years in a row, 10 and 0. Three years in a row, yeah. 10 and 0. Uh, and conference titles, seven out of the last eight, or was it nine out of the last 10? Uh, let's see. We've won nine. Uh, we've won eight out of the last 10, I think. Eight out of the last yeah. 10. Okay. Nobody's uh, going to feel bad if we lose. <laughs> if that's what you do. You, do you, I, like, I, I wasn't getting to that, but I'll, yeah. I'll ask that. Do do you notice that when you go into uh, other uh, courts? They, they well, don't mind if you lose? Not, not calling people out, but when we – Junior year, no, I, I guess two years ago, I say no, it was junior year. When we were playing for the conference championship, or sorry, the regional championship against Benton at Carmine, yeah, yeah. we had a couple conference teams cheering for Benton. Oh, now that's just wrong. I was going to ask that, that, about that's that. That's actually not okay. That's just yeah. wrong. Well, that's, yeah. not, that, like, that's, not, that's, that's not cricket. So, You're anyway. You're supposed to root for the team it, in your conference. I, it happens. <laughs> well, I, I, it sounds, yeah. like, sounds like you took notes. Well, one of them, one of them is going to be the better team. One of the better teams in yeah. conference is Shurhamco. They have everybody back. Um, my opinion and theirs too. Uh, this is this Good is the best too. team they've had in ten years yeah. plus. And, and, so and Doug Miller's uh, uh, yeah. an outstanding coach. And they've got the addedness of our, us taking their JV coach from them too, and Coach Bailey. So th- those will be two <laughs> fun games. We are shooting. We uh, you are. We are um, shooting one of those games. I know. Looks that. like we play them. It's at home. Yeah, Tuesday the fourteenth of okay. December. Right, that last week before we leave for Christmas break. First time around uh, through the yeah. through the conference. That, right. they, they will be good. Um, they're looking at twenty plus wins. I think. Karma have much coming back. They lost a lot. Um, but they still have, you know, a couple solid JV kids from their their team coming back. El Dorado has a couple varsity starters coming back. Um, what do, uh, uh, a I, new coach? Well, they moved the JV coach up over at uh, Edwards County. What are we expecting from the Fighting Lions? Well, you know, they lost they lost some of their better kids too. But you never know. I mean, and then I don't know as much about Phil's group. I knew last year's seniors because those are the ones that Noah always played against and Landon and those guys but um you know it like I said it's I I think it's I think it's Hamco for sure I our kids know that they should be up there too I did kind of um, put words in your mouth you are glad to see Flora in the conference yeah right? yeah I mean Flora's 35 minutes 
to get there. I'm, I, you know, we were playing them anyway. They were in our conference for 80 years. Yeah. JC is an hour and 15. Um, yeah, we're happy to have them here. All right. Well, that's cool. I, uh, that, that's that's good to hear. Since I already told them that you were that they were happy. You were. Yeah. <laughs> you guys Bring were back happy those there. old floor fair club rivals. You know, and that's the sad thing too. Like when you're in school, if you ask kids, "Hey, man, who was your biggest rival?" I'm, I'm sure a lot of them would say. Yeah. Oh yeah, Flora. Oh, absolutely. and them the same. Yeah, with our kids now. Is it El Dorado? Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, El Dorado is. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Uh, I tell you what, let's just take another quick break, and uh, and I'll uh, come back. We're we'll, going to talk a little bit more about the, the team this year. We kind of glossed over it, and might even talk a little bit of the line eight college hoops. You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey and uh, Scott McAravey is here. Back after this, stick around. Make Carnaby Square in downtown Fairfield your fashion leader. We're the little boutique with the big inventory of beautiful, trendy outfits and clothing in a wide rate of your favorite name brands. And don't forget our large selection of jewelry and accessories. Carnaby Square is Southern Illinois' largest dealer of Brighton. At Carnaby Square, we take pride in our one-on-one, -on -one knowledgeable customer service and look forward to helping you create your own special look. Plus, always free gift wrapping. Find endless gift ideas 24-7 at CarnabySquare.com and on our Facebook page. Shop the fashion leader in downtown Fairfield, Carnaby Square. When it comes to your banking, you have as many options as colors in the crayon box. That's why you can bank your way to Topless State Bank. What works best for you may be different from what works best for your neighbor. To Topless State Bank is built to serve all your banking needs. Whether it's online banking, mobile check deposit, text banking, or just stopping in to see them at one of their three convenient locations. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender, it's to Topless State Bank. Banking made personal since 1913. Napa know-how. At Flora Auto Parts, you can count on the Napa know-how experts to have the solutions to keep you running on the road or in the field. More than just your car, your locally owned Napa store carries a large inventory of parts for farms, heavy trucks, and just about everything that moves. Experienced counter people understand your needs and are ready to help with the perfect part at a great value. That's Napa know-how at Flora Auto Parts. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to LeMond Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. LeMond's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. In 1916, Warren Miller chose Auto Owners Insurance. Later, his son made the same choice, as did his grandson. And today, his great-granddaughter did the same. As we reflect on where we've been, we're grateful to our independent agents and to those who have put their trust in us, and to the generations who will. Auto Owners Insurance. Harrison Insurance in Louisville is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Does your home show signs of foundation problems? Call the experts at Woods Basement Systems. Our power brace system can fix the problem permanently and help protect the value of your home. Call Woods Basement Systems today. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Mold, rank air, pests, all getting closer to inside your home. With a dirt crawl space, there's no telling what's below you. A sealed crawl space locks the nasty stuff out, plus can lower your utility bills. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Big Talk with Bruce. By the way, that's all allergies. Okay. <laughs> Just let you know. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Big talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV. Talking with Scott McElravey. He's the head coach of the uh, Fairfield Mules basketball squad. We kind of glossed over uh, your squad. You've been, over the over the last few years, you've become ter terrifically dependent, and which, why wouldn't you, on the long shot, the three-point shot. 
you don't really have the sharpshooters out there, it seems like, this year, do you? Or, or do you? Do you have somebody no, ready to yeah, step I'd say up and take the place? The last three years, we've had some pretty good shooters. Well, you've had McElravey, you've had McElravey and Zerlini. I yeah. mean, it, Zerlini this was a threat when he got off the bus. The, they're, they're two of the best stat shooters we've had. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, yeah. And but they, they knew also it. grew. And yeah. they knew it. They, yeah. they, they, they were they were. We've aware. had a lot of other good ones, too. Yeah. Um, this group is scrappy. I mean, I think that's the, the – the first word that comes to mind with them, they're very scrappy um, defensively. Um, they just don't give in, you know. Um, and I, they play pretty well as a team together. We, we don't have a ton of size, but we've got pretty good athleticism. And we're not little, you know. We're actually well, just as big little, as we were last year. A little bigger. I was thinking Probably maybe a little, little bigger. bit bigger. Yeah. But you're bigger in places where you normally are bigger as opposed yep. to last year you're big out of the guard i mean when you have landon zerlini playing guard yeah. all the time and now you're, you're you're you've got size inside yeah and you know once again we've the the schedule is is pretty ramped up this year you know we're, we're playing some really good competition we have uh t-town coming to fairfield for the first time i think ever um i think at, that's right yeah we've added all i mean all these really good this year benton's good um, our non-conference is pretty pretty solid. Is, uh, is Flanagan's kid still there, or did he? No, gradu- he mo- he graduated. He is he, playing. He, he, he was one of them, he's one of them that moved out of state to, he did. to play. And and Rob and I talked a little bit about that. Like that was that was hard. I him. bet because well, I mean, Rob been was looking still forward coaching. to that too. Yeah. yeah. So that hurt their team a lot last year. But they're the Travis kid's really good. Uh, they have they've got five starters coming back, don't they? They're, yeah, they're going to be probably one of the better teams we play. T Town will be as well. Um, play Casey Westfield again. Um, I think we have that. We're shooting that one, I believe. That's at Casey. Well, then we're not it's, shooting it's, that one. We play T-Town Friday night and then go to Casey okay. Saturday. Okay. So that's that's two tough games right in a row. That's going to be a fun little trip or a fun little yeah. week, then, won't it? The last time we were at Casey, we had a lot of good stuff happen there. They're probably chomping at the bit. Yeah. They wanted to play us so bad last year, and they were really good last year. Um, well, then, now where, where did their kid go to play? He is at Milliken, and they're super excited – to get Noah Livingston. They Noah think Livingston, they, I couldn't remember his name. They think they got he was a, tough. a good steal. And, that, and that's actually where Macklin Snyder is a GA there. Okay. Coaching. So I got an ex-player coaching there. So, yeah, they're they're super excited about him. Do you still – let's let's talk a little bit about the kids uh, playing college ball. You've got uh, some kids playing all over the place, don't you? We mentioned well, the McKendry. Yeah, so we'll start with Wyatt uh, Gilbert. He's playing football at UT Martin. Yeah. Um, so is he using any of the skills that you help teach him? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think I taught him any football skills. Uh, why, great kid. Um, yeah. Kane Hickson Ball is at Wren Lake in his second year okay. playing basketball. Um, Landon's at McKendry playing okay. basketball this year. They've moved up to D2, so he's going to be playing against really good competition. And then my oh, son, really? Yeah, I didn't realize they were D2. D2. They're in oh, U.S. Wow. Ice Conference with oh, Kentucky yeah. Westland and them. Yeah. And then my son knows at Oakland City playing golf and, and basketball. Okay. So – I guess, you know, the last three years when we've been 77 and 10, I had, I had some good players. That, that's the big <laughs> you, thing right there. You, you mentioned it. I, yeah. I was going I was, I was to bring it up again, but it didn't, didn't pop up. The, 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 yeah. My power outage affected my pictures. Hopefully it's yeah. not the only thing. It's, well, that's cool, though. And it that's is. kind of the goal, isn't it? It is. I mean, that's what they look forward to. And, and yeah. you know, I mean, I, Coach Book and I have talked a lot about you know, before the three years start, we knew we were going to be good yeah. and to try to maximize as as much as we could there. Um, you know, the last year we got shorted some games, but and some chances maybe with postseason and stuff. But three very special years. Well, that's you know that's something the kids will always remember. That's that's yeah. for sure. All right, speaking of, we don't want to stop on that though. We want to carry that on with this year's group. Well, so. yeah, that's what that's, I was that, asking. And they they want they are really really excited about that challenge. Okay. Well, yeah, they don't want to stop. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. They, yeah they let, make sure they – don't let them stop, Scott. We're, we're not. We're not. We've got used to that. Let's keep it going. Uh, tell me about your Illini. What, what are we going to do this year? Are we going to are we gonna lose to Loyola in the second round? That has to be probably the one of the most – probably going back to the North Carolina championship game. National, that, that just – I couldn't I, – I think I got – Out of the blue. I think I got banned from my own house from my wife. After that game for a few hours, I just couldn't handle it. That that was tough. That that's not what we all expected. Um, now, in saying that, this year's group, I I really think they could be just as good as that. Do you think so? I, I do. Um, different. I mean, but you know, you got to stay healthy. You got to 
you know, a lot of factors come into play. And, and when you're just playing somebody one game, you know, it goes back to that Benton game or the T-Town Sweet 16 game. If, you know, those are two losses that we ended our seasons with. Our kids would go back and play those right now. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like you got beat by 30. Yeah. You know, so. The T-Town, yeah, that was a Vandalia that night, It right? was. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Wow, that was fun too. Yeah, but so, line I, I, <laughs> Scott, I saw the eyes. Darn you for bringing that up. Yeah, you know, it, it was. If we beat them, they, that was the last year in the Capital Classic, and we beat yeah, them, yeah. you know, early in the year. And I joked with Coach Reader after, you know, the next year. I said, "Man, if I could have switched those games, I would have." I did. The Capital <laughs> Classic was special. Yeah. You know, not too many teams win that tournament. Um, it's usually a state ranked team of some sort. And That's we right. We were that year. Yeah. Um, well, usually, usually a, a team out of that tournament goes they go to the a long elite way. eight or, the or multiple final four. teams. Yeah. 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 Um, but I would have switched him to get, to play at Carbondale. Uh, that that would have been neat. Yeah, that would have been a good time. Uh, let's let me ask you a little bit about then uh, about the uh, Capital Classic this year. What do, you've got Lawrenceville, uh, they've they've been uh, improving over the last. They few have. Years. They're young. They've got some good young kids. You're playing, playing. at the Lawrenceville site. Right? We are. Yeah. Um, and that's our first game actually is against the Indians. Um, it's it's going to be tougher this year out of the gate because you've had a year off on some of these teams. We couldn't play them or Alney or them. Those guys, North they were in the other section. They're outside of our COVID region. Yeah, yeah. So you lost region. a year of learning kids and and all that. So, you know, um, in saying that, they're not going to know our kids as well either. So you're going to go in a little more blind than usual. Um, now, once you get into the season, you know, with the t trade, ta you know, trading film and all that, and a lot of games online, you can catch up pretty easy. But who all is in your uh, in your? We've got half. yeah, we've got Lawrenceville, we've got Salem, who's got. I, I think they're going to be good. The Caden B kids. Caden B really, is an athlete. He, he's he outstanding. gave us a ton of trouble last year when we beat him on a landing. I think Salem. Charlie Fernbacher is going to be pretty good too. I do too. He's big. Yeah, they did. They did lose a few kids, but I think they're still going to be um, very solid. And then Marshall, who perennially every year has twenty wins. So I I, I really think you got Alney, no favors, did you? I, no. <laughs> and on the other first, side, though. Your first tournament since the, the first well, Capital Classic but, since you won it. They're doing you no favors. Yeah. But it's saying that Alney's really good on the other side. Mount Carmel's good. You know, you got then you got Red Hill and Edwards County. Yeah. So, yeah. Actually, we lost. Oh, that's right. We lost, we lost the, the last time. Marshall two years ago. Three years yeah. ago. Uh, the yeah. 2000. So the last two years we've been in the championship game. I'll take that. If you give that to me right now, I'll take it. Give you the opportunity. Don't care how we get there. I'll take it. <laughs> I think the kids would too. Uh, you mentioned Mount Carmel. They're not going to. They're. They're. They've got to be down. They lost. They lost the uh, the big stud. Appleby and Stip were two all state players, and and rightfully so. Um, they were both very good, but they returned the rest of the kids pretty much from those. They, you know, they, they will be. They will be a very solid and there team. There is a lot to be said for being able to practice with and against all state talented players. Oh, our, that's that's our group this year. I mean, yeah. they're chomping at the bit to get in there and, and show they can play too because their last, you know, all 3 years of their career, that's they've went against they played against all these other yeah. teams I've had. So, you know, um they're excited to get out there and play too. Well, that is uh, that's outstanding. Um give me the uh, rundown then on the Big 10. Man, I've got I, like three minutes. I, I think, I mean, I'm a line I homer, so I'm yeah. gonna, I'm a, I want them to be first. You I know mentioned the Michigan. They're bit, really yeah. good, even though I don't want them to be. Yeah. Um, Purdue is good. I, I I respect Coach Painter a lot. He does a good job. Um, I think those are the three top teams. O Ohio State will be good. And never count out Michigan State. What do you think about the Hoosiers? I mean, is Mike Woodson going to work out there? Man. I, I, they they kind of went right back down into the uh, Bob Knight uh, tree over there they did. at Indiana. Were you were you surprised they did that? I was I was kind of surprised. That, that came out of the blue, I will yeah. say, because yeah. he was before my time, Mike Mike Woodson. Um, and being good, a good, being good, a line I saw him play. <laughs> being a line I homer, you really don't cheer for the Hoosiers no, much. No, not <laughs> at all. But they'll be good. I mean. I, honestly, I think the Big Ten's as good as any conference, top to bottom. Um, that they're uh, those top teams are really good. Have but, you had a chance to catch Io Desumu with the? Uh, I have 
with the uh, yeah. Chicago Bulls. He has played well. Um, I've always been a lifelong Celtics fan, and he put it to them the other he night. He really did. He, he, he played really well. I was really surprised well. by that. Yeah, yeah. He, he basically took over that game at He's the end, didn't he? being the, thir- I think, 38th or pick or 37th. Seventh. I don't think there's that many guys in they were, front of him that were Somebody better. was mentioning the yeah. other day. There I've seen are, a lot of people there, say that. There aren't 36 players better than no. IU. I have 36 rookies yeah. better than IU. Well, you, I He's he's good. I'm glad that he stayed at Illinois in, for three years. In the amount in the time of the COVID and stuff, and with all the with all the NBA stuck in the you know the, the bubble and all that kind of thing, were you able to watch more of it than you ever expected? I, I mean, watched a lot of did games. Did you watch last the Bucks? Year. I did, and I, I I really like Giannis. He's a good player. I, Chris Middleton's really good too. Yeah, <laughs> he's an underrated guy. Um, yeah, people. I mean, the the NBA is different, obviously, than high school and. College. I mean, you just look at the measurables of the guys, the, the athleticism, the height and everything. The ability for guys to shoot from long range anymore is just, if you can't shoot a three, you can't hardly play. And you, you can't play. Yeah, whether, even if you're a big guy. And that, that, that hurts Kofi a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Scott, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate and, it. And uh, yeah. best of luck to it's you. It's always fun to be best, here. Best of luck to you this year. And uh, and uh, let's get through safe and sound. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you. That's Scott McElravey. I'm Bruce Dickey. Thank you so much for watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. And we'll see you all next time. Have a great day. We did it.